jeez. Here I am monkeying with the uh Jeez, look at this guy. <laughs> he finally went. I was monkeying with my windows here trying to get a little bit better light and I looked down and there's this burb. You guys are probably sitting there watching this like, hey dummy, why don't you get that fish? Uh, not a big guy. Whoa. Oh, not a big fish, but oh my goodness, colored up one nonetheless. Very cool. Man, these daytime burbs are just so much fun. Well, hopefully I am done. Uh, messing with these dang windows and we can get back to some fish in here. Oop, another burb attacking the camera. Jeez, these things are loving that camera. Oop, there's a burb. Like and dummy looking at my phone. Uh, there he is, just that little guy. Come on, find that way up that hole. Really little guy. Pop that guy out quick. There we got burb number two for the night. So colorful. Even these little guys are fun. Oh, another one coming up for the camera. God dang, they are loving that camera. Oh, and there you see them swimming off. They've been actually liking these baits a little bit more off bottom. So I might switch up to another little bigger spoon because it seems they like that bigger presentation. And again, just try to get that off bottom because man, have they been coming up for that camera. So I'm gonna set up one of my rods here with a little bit bigger bait and see if we can't get a few more bites doing that. Oop, oop, he whiffed. He's looking for it. He can't find it. There, he's smitten with it. Yep. <laughs> oh, I will never get sick of seeing fish eat like that on the underwater camera. I just got my um, dead stick set with a little bit bigger bait. Ooh, this guy's dogging me a little bit. Uh, you can see him down there. So he wasn't dogging me, he was just caught in the camera cord. Finally got that guy out. Another little one, but all of these burbs are so darn fun. Camera's undone. Slide this guy back down, watch him go. God, they just take so long. Yep, that one's a little tight or a little loose. But we got them. Yeah, that one was on that bigger spoon too. They must be liking that little bit bigger presentation. You know, you can see how much of a struggle it is for them sometimes to even find it. And you hear that a lot with burbs. Whoa, uh, shoot. Hooked up into my other line. There we go. A little curly tail. Oh, these burbs. So much fun. If I can straighten them out here. So much fun this time of year, not a lot else going on as far as fish that will fight like this, but we will send them back down. There we go, another burb. That one on the dead stick, same spoon, but I upped the size a little bit. Oh, well, you can see it there. Up the size a little bit because they were wanting that, to look at that camera and come and attack that camera. And that's the biggest kind of darkest thing down so I decided to uh, put this little bit bigger one instead of that smaller dead stick kind of dangle it off bottom like they were looking at the camera and sure enough that one came up wanted the uh, little bit bigger presentation like that that wind is still just ripping out there I am so glad I decided to throw the house on the snowmobile I just picked up the shack this winter from PC fun it is their smallest one that they had I wanted something that I could do exactly this. When I don't want to pull the fish house, pull the sled behind, and I just wanna be able to stack everything on my snowmobile, something that I could do that with. And this house just fit perfectly. Actually, I just put it right behind my auger rack in front of my sled, and being able to deal with these slushy conditions like this, this smaller house, still able to get out of the wind, easy to set up, even in the wind, just attach it to the sled so it's not gonna blow away and we are fishing in comfort. And it is so nice to be able to do that, to kind of run around, get through the slush, and, oh, got one coming. Oh, he's gonna go take a look at the dead stick, maybe? Yep, bit the dead stick. Except for I don't have the camera down. Uh, the camera was facing the wrong way. I was just, after that other fish, I was just explaining kind of what we got going on with this uh, fish house set up, and thought I saw something on the live scope. 
Starting to look at the camera, but that again was on the dead stick. This one's not, whoa. Just a little burb. A little squirrely guy, whoa. Now time to get everything reset and try again. But yes, this small little hub house like this is so nice. Um, you know, there's obviously some convenience with the flip over shacks and I love using those, but when you're in a situation like this with all this slush, I tell you what, it is pretty darn convenient to be able to come out with just the snowmobile, not have to worry about getting stuck, not have to worry about pulling out a house and a snowmobile. That's what we got going on. We're gonna get everything reset here, get everything back in order, and we're gonna be ready to rock. Ooh, something, yep. <laughs> just getting a few things situated with the camera. And I saw something coming in right underneath on the live scope. That one finally came up for my bait and not for the live scope. Uh, a little skinnier little guy. Nice and colored up. And we'll send him back down. A little dark for the underwater camera. Oh, we got two down there. Ooh, this one's a little bit better. I am off my game today. Decent fish right here. You can see it on the live scope at least. Looks decent. Ooh, there we go. Having that little bit extra length on this 36 medium. This is such a sweet pout rod. This is kind of my go-to everything rod right now. Walleyes, um, pout, lot of species. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a good one. After dark pout, so much fun. Got to be kind of a grind there for a bit, to be honest. We. Uh, had some pretty good action right away. Oh, my hands are so cold and frozen right now from those fish. We came up for a second. There we go, this one. I don't know what, oh, there is two down there. Sweet. Got a little bit of a night bite going on here. Whoa, another little guy. There's a second one down there with him. So we'll get him back down. See if he's gonna come around and come back. You can see it just barely moving on bottom there. There he's gonna come up. There he's gonna come up. Come on. There he bit. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. I tell you what, there's not a whole lot more fun after walleye closes than being able to come out and chase some burbs. I mean, even, probably not a huge one here, but that's such a fun fight. Good action, great fish. Oh, oh. Hooked up in my transducer here. Just an absolute blast. Not a whole lot more fun than this right now. A lot of people hate on these slimy buggers. Sometimes not the prettiest. Jeez, clearly hard to hold on to. There we go. One more little guy. I really quickly did want to mention kind of what I'm fishing right now. Honestly, what this is, is kind of your typical burbot spot. It's a steep break line. I'm in about 25 to 30 feet, kind of around in there. And basically what this is, is just like a highway for these fish. These fish aren't spawning here. What they're doing is they are just moving back and forth. Um, I just got done talking with Tyler Robinson is the name. He actually did a study on burbot. Um, I was able to actually meet with him. He was so kind, so generous with his time to be able to meet with me, answer some of my questions. Um, and just kind of share some of what he found. And one of the things that he noticed in this study is that during the spawn, ar around that mid-March time for a lot of Minnesota, what these fish do is they move a ton. So he was showing me some of these movement patterns of some of these fish and just how much they truly moved. You know, what I thought is that when you get on a good burbot bite in the springtime like this, I thought you were just really close to spawning ground or you're on right on that area where that burbot ball is. But honestly, what this is, this is literally just like a highway. These fish move so much when it gets to be around this spawn time. So being able to be around these high traffic areas like this, I talk a lot about that in walleye fishing and some of those spots that I like to fish. But these steep breaks are literally, like I said, a highway. These fish cruise back and forth on these. So you're not just getting these fish that are hanging out in this one area. These are new fish moving through constantly. So it's a area that these fish are cruising a lot. These steep breaks, they are able to move from deeper to shallower very easily as they kind of prepare for the spawn. Yep, another burb. Yep, I did. 
Another burb right there. Yep. You bet. Another not big one. Yep. You bet. Sitting right on bottom. That tends to be a pattern. During the day, they're willing to be a little more aggressive, kind of chasing up. Um, and then it gets to be as this more dark and after dark. Whoa. Slapping around. They like to eat things a little bit more off bottom. Again, size, not great. Action, super fun. One thing I did want to touch base on real quick that was a game changer for me today is having these cameras. One, getting the footage of some of these fish biting is always super cool. Um, but as far as usability, these were great today. You know, when I'm using the live scope, I can see a lot on my live scope. I can kind of see where structure is. I can kind of get a general idea. I can see schools of fish at times. And so for a lot of purposes, the live scope is super, super beneficial. Um, but I tell you what, being able to see what's actually down there on these smaller portable cameras. This one is the 822, the other one's the Micro 5. Both very, very small, compact cameras. But being able to see what's actually down there, what I did before I kind of set up camp here, is I wanted to know, oh, <laughs> catching a burbot. Uh, that is awesome. But like I was saying, I wanted to know what I was even looking at. Um, you know, I could kind of see this general area. It's a little bit of a drop off that I know these burbot will cruise. But one of the things that I found is that these fish key in on, well, I'll get this one in and then keep talking. Just a little burbot like that. But like I was saying, these fish tend to key in on a little bit more of these rocky, rubbly areas. So what I did is I actually punched a few holes in the area and there's a lot of sand around on this specific stretch of this brake line there's a lot of sand but there's a couple patches of these a little bit more rocky rubbly not big boulders but some of the smaller rocky rubbly patches and what I've noticed is these fish as they're cruising some of these they love the transition of that sand to rock and with my live scope I can see this brake line you know I can see some of the reefs that I'm fishing but I'm not able to kind of key in on some of those specific, some of those specific transition lines, you know, some of that little bit smaller rock face like this, or those little smaller rock pieces. So being able to use some of these cameras, <laughs> geez, I think I have one going on here too. Uh, not a bad interruption. I don't know if he has it. If he does, it's small. <laughs> there it is. Uh, sorry for a couple of these interruptions, but like I was saying, these fish tend to hang around some of these and I can't always see that on my live scope. I can see the general area, but I'm not always seeing some of these specific features that hold these fish. Okay. Again, I'll get this guy off and I'll keep talking. <laughs> there we go, another little burb. But like I was saying, I can't always see some of these specific features down there. So being able to pinpoint that spot on the spot, I love using live scope for finding the general area, finding some of these brake lines, finding some of that. But I'm really working on keying in on that exact spot, especially for a time like this when it's super windy and I know I'm gonna set up camp once. Being able to be on the spot that I wanna be on is huge because sometimes 20 feet away, makes a huge difference. If I, for example, I'm seeing a lot of fish cruising right here where this rock rubble transition is, but if I was 20 feet shallower, 20 feet deeper, even 20 feet down the brake line at the same depth, there's not the same rock. So if you don't have one of these yet, I highly recommend looking into one because they will make a big difference in your efficiency with catching fish. I will put the links for these in the description below if you're interested, go ahead and check them out. If you have any questions on which ones I prefer for which situations, feel free to reach out. I would love to help in any way that I can kind of share some of my experience that I've had. Well, I do have to call it. Thanks so much for watching. Quick hitter, burbot fishing after school today, being able to get in, especially after this time change, being able to get in a little bit of fishing at night like this is just awesome. And there's a burbot. Well, like I said, thanks for watching. I appreciate the support all the time. Um, thanks so much. We will see you next time. Actually, I better land this fish first and then I'll do a little outro. Well, there we go. Another little burb. It is pretty hard to leave right now when the fish are biting like this. As always, I appreciate the support. Thanks so much for all the comments, all the likes, all the shares. All of that, it truly means a lot. This outro is getting long. I gotta go. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.